banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. It appears to be so. I agree. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden, sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Your mocking tone finds no response, but the motion of the waves. Yes, yes. Crazy recklessness. I'd say it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. The lieutenant's estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday Eve. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. Rust, moss and sea life have already claimed it for themselves and initiated a slow decomposition process. The logo is too deep in murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket, a joyrider jacket. I don't know. An hour or two tops? As you sit down in the old, rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. The tune on your lips forms a strange, yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Two birds on a wire, whistling by the seaside, looking at the water and the sunken car. The wind blows in the distance behind the church. Some vagrants are having an argument over a bag of tear they found in the reeds. Further away, a flock of seagulls lands. The clouds pass in the sky, and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. Well, historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Okay, he's thinking. I can do this. Let's do this. Who'd want to sit on an anthill? There are no therapeutic benefits to... Well, napalm ants, for example, are used in some rites of passage rituals. Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization, and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Coupri, Model 40. It is a simple and rugged machine, 
favored by working men, government offices, uh, firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about that speed racer? Right. Or 41 is the number of a police precinct? Your precinct. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. You feel like you're about to faint and fall off the swing. Your hands get clammy, and the air tastes sour to breathe. Oh God, Harry. Oh God, Harry. What did you do? No. Just nope. Say no to this, Harry. Yes, your car is in the sea. Face it, so we can start dealing with this. There were never any street racers. It was always you. You drove your car in the sea. The lieutenant just shakes his head. I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Well, it isn't. It's you. I'm very sorry. Of whom? I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. Probably. Try definitely. You can still whistle. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. Detective, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable. But overall, this machine is a write-off. That is very unlikely. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. Let's face it, this is a substantial loss to your district's budget. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. This was 20% of the station's vehicular budget. Yes, let's go take a look. police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. At least something good came out of all this. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Rivershall West. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. But the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. What do you think? 
His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. It looks better on him because he isn't in as much pain while producing it as you are now. Although there's already a hint of that pain, certainly. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Harrier, that's long for Harry. So you are a Harry. Evrat was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him your Harry Dubois didn't. It's a wartime name, revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times, like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. It's meant to keep you safe from bullets, hunger, shrapnel, kidnappings, and worse. Why? It's a cool name. I like it. Besides, you're Harry anyway. No one's ever called Harrier. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information. Lieutenant W. Freighter. The lieutenant is a rank above sergeant and below captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. The title of Yefrator is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Yefrator. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's décontage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. Yes, uh, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past, and this leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. I um, don't really know how to respond to that, Lieutenant de Bailly Freighter. Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kings. Kings like satellite officers and the additional freighter rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. And now we've even found your badge. He trusts you, for now. Try not to spoil it. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. It reads... That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose. One that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. 